Aruba and Curacao have many similarities. They're both paradises with beautiful beaches, crystal clear blue Caribbean waters, warm inviting climates. Honestly, there's not a whole lot to differentiate the two of these characteristics. You would do well to enjoy either one of these countries. This video, however, is aimed at pointing out some of the significant differences we noticed between the two countries in our experiences there. Hi everybody, we're Lori and Air. And this is Plan Free, the channel that illustrates a location independent lifestyle and shows you how to get it for yourself. We've had the good fortune of living in Curacao for six months and then also Aruba for six months. In the video today, we're gonna to discuss the differences that we experience between the two countries in hopes that it will help you in deciding if you must to visit one country or the other. The first thing we'll touch on is size and population. Curacao in relation to Aruba is about two and a half times the size with Curacao being about 440 square kilometers or 170 square miles, with the size of Aruba being about 180 square kilometers or 70 square miles. The population of Aruba is about 107,000 people compared to the population of Curacao, which is about 164,000 people. Where you will notice the difference here comes in the form of drive times and traffic density. So in Aruba, for example, you could drive for let's say an hour and a half and you could make it to pretty much any other point on the island. And I would say the traffic density is primarily middle to low in Aruba, unless you're trying to drive downtown, uh, right in the center of the cruise ports, or let's say you're trying to drive in rush hour to the airport or something, then traffic can back up. You compare that to Curacao where you could be driving for an hour and a half and not even be at the west point of the island yet. Um, also in the most populated centers of uh, Curacao, being Willemstead and surrounding areas, you will find traffic congestion to be the norm. Uh, so we found driving to be mostly in a general sense easier to navigate in Aruba. And also I might, might say that the drivers in Aruba were a little bit more courteous and friendly as far as letting people in and out of traffic. Let's talk about beaches. Yes, both Curacao and Aruba have beautiful Caribbean beaches like we touched on earlier, but there are some significant differences as it relates to, I would say the culture of the different islands and how they approach their beaches. So for example, in Curacao, let's say right in uh, Willemstead or just off, you've got beaches like Mambo, which are built up and very developed. Mambo, you'll walk on like a paved boulevard through a mall of shops, all different sorts, food, Starbucks, clothing, souvenirs, all different kinds of shops before you even reach the beach. Then you'll reach basically one after another, shoulder to shoulder, little beach resorts or restaurants and they'll have their own chairs set up basically right to the waterline. Now the setting here in Curacao is they'll expect you to pay to access beaches like this. Even if you're not using a lounge chair and you're just setting a towel on the ground, they will often come and ask you for payment as if they own the beach. Maybe they do. We were surprised by that. We were quite surprised by that. Now, you could see that as a positive or negative depending on what you're looking for in a beach and where you're at in life. Like let's say for example, you come as a family. Well, having all the amenities right there at your fingertips might be an advantage for you. Or let's say you're someone that wants to lay on a lounge chair and not get up. You want drinks brought to you, food brought to you. Then a place like Mambo or a developed uh, beach on Curacao might be an advantage for you. For us, we're not sure having to pay to sit on a beach was taken as a positive. Because remember, we're living there for six months. So when we just worked a whole day and wanted to go chill out and relax on the beach, 10, $12, five days a week doesn't really make much sense for us. So we were a bit surprised. Right, that starts to add up. Now, when you compare that to the beaches in Aruba, yes, Aruba has some built up beaches in their high rise district, but in my opinion, they've done a better job of differentiating between beach and where their resorts start. So you've got quite a distance of sand and uh, open beaches. They, mm -hmm. The beaches on Aruba, even the developed ones feel much more open they than the are. ones in Curacao. They're huge beaches in Aruba. They go down for... 
So in summary, yes, you still can get your products and services uh, near the beach in Aruba. You'd probably have to walk, let's say five minutes back into the resort or the nearest like drink stand, that kind of thing. So it's a little bit more separated than Curacao, but conversely, the beaches feel a lot more beach-like and open in Aruba. And the one main difference that we're making a point of here is that in Aruba, they're not gonna ask you to pay to access or be on any of the beaches. I think in six months that we stayed in Aruba, we were asked zero times for any money to be on the beach. And for us, that was a decided advantage and positive. All right, let's touch briefly on snorkeling and free diving and the differences between the two islands. Like I mentioned, Aruba is much smaller than Curacao, just in geography, uh, the size of the island. You'll find the population in Curacao much more condensed into Willemstad proper and slight outlying areas. And so it has large, less populated, unspoiled locations on the island where you can get in the water and find decent quality snorkeling and free diving. In Aruba, I would say that'd be much harder to find because Aruba is smaller, it's much easier to access every part of the island, and on one part of the island, uh, the water is quite rough, and so it's not really appropriate to be trying to get in and out of. Uh, so that leaves basically the other side of the island only for snorkeling and free diving. So I would say in this instance here, Curacao has the decided advantage with higher quality free diving and snorkeling. We wanted to touch on um, maybe hiking or outdoor activities in terms of walking and exercise type um, activities. Um, they Both islands, Curacao and Aruba, each have one main large um, peak, I guess, um, but they really differ. So the largest accessible point on Aruba is called Hoiberg Hike. We have a video on that if you want to check it out. And it's about 500 uh, feet high, a really good workout, I would say. And, something really memorable to do. Curacao was more of an, a little bit of an adventure, a hike, mountain climbing, kind of rock scrambling, that kind of thing. Um, Mount Christoffel, and it, we have a video on that too. And it's over 1200 feet high. So we, our legs got a good workout. Um, and so I think one of the main differences there in terms of outdoor activities for the two islands in comparison would be the sheer vastness of Curacao, there's just so much more to do. There's, you could do a hike every couple of weeks and, and not really get to everything in Curacao in six months. And Aruba is much easier. It's much smaller terrain to cover. Now, when we talk about mountains in Curacao and Aruba, we would more refer to them as hills because we're from Western Canada. So we're not far off from the Canadian Rockies where you know those in our perspective anyways those are real mountains whereas the ones we're talking about here are more like hills let's touch briefly on the people and the subtle differences we noticed between the two islands now we found the people to be generally quite friendly on both curacao and aruba we have to say in our experience however the people on aruba were just that much more friendly uh, that much more welcoming and genuine and a little bit more relaxed overall in their demeanor. One happy island. It's actually quite a good moniker and we found it to be true for the most part. We did. We'll touch on the economies of the two countries respectively uh, briefly here. The economy in Curacao is more diversified than the economy in Aruba. The People of Curacao, you'll find many uh, career professionals there from a variety of different uh, industries and professions with definitely still a significant amount of tourism making up the pie of the economy. When you compare that to Aruba, you've got an economy that's very significantly focused and dominated by tourism. So that's gonna be a fairly significant difference between the two. Well, we had to immerse ourselves in the economy on both islands because we had to figure out the visa situation. Uh, both islands are similar in terms of rough cost to extend our visa, procedure to have to do it, multiple visits down to the downtown immigration office. So all that fun stuff was the same. So we really wanted to just touch on the big main difference for us was um, in Aruba at the halfway point, the three month mark, we were told that we would have to leave the country, fly, obviously it's an island, and then fly back again and sort of reset that. So that was an expense we 
We didn't mind paying, but it would have been nicer to just stay put, stay home, and enjoy the beaches. But we had to fly to Miami and come back again, and so that was a huge difference. Right, whereas in Curacao, we were able to uh, be granted a full six month stay without ever having to leave Curacao. So that was a huge advantage for us. In one case in Curacao, we could stay the whole six months without having to leave. And in Aruba, we were simply basically forced, if we wanted to stay for six months, we had to fly out of Aruba to Miami, stay for a few days and fly back. And for someone that's enjoying slow travel like we are, that's a major uh, inconvenience. The local language that's spoken on both Curacao and Aruba is Papiamento. And to uh, foreigners' ears, it sounded to me like there may be two different dialects. And so all the stuff I'm gonna talk about, if there's any local folks from either Curacao or Aruba watching this, maybe just add to the comments and let me know if I'm on the right track or if maybe I'm out to lunch, who knows. But to me, it sounded like the Papiamento was spoken slightly differently between Curacao and Aruba, whether it be different words chosen or uh, different pronunciations of those words. It just sounded a little bit different from island to island to my ears. Mm -hmm. Different dialect? Perhaps. So let's touch on a little bit of a cultural difference uh, as far as word selection and languages go. One of the most popular compliments and used words in the Papiamento language is douchey. Douchey means sweet or sweetie or sweetness, that kind of thing. It's a compliment that one would give to another person when they're uh, endearing themselves or the other person is endearing themselves to the person giving the compliment. So you might say in Papiamento, uh, oh, you're so douchey. Whereas in North America, you would say something like, oh, you're such a sweetie, you know, that kind of thing. Another word uh, they use is uh, borrowed from the Netherlands. And when they say thank you, they say donkey. So quite, quite common phrase to hear in Curacao and Aruba is donkey douchey. Whereas if you were to try to say that to your cocktail waitress in Las Vegas, you would probably get backhanded. Yes. Douchey is such a popular word in both Curacao and Aruba that in most of the souvenir shops you're going to see t-shirts proclaiming how douchey you are. <laughs> Whereas I would imagine, well, Lori and I couldn't bring ourselves to buy one of these shirts and I would imagine the sales aren't very brisk to North Americans. If you can just imagine yourself walking up and down the street with your chest puffed out Bruh. proclaiming, I'm so douchey. There's, I didn't even use that word one time. The donkey, yes, you have to. You want to be polite, thank the waitress for your meal, whatever. Get that visa extension, donkey, donkey, masha donkey. But douchey, never once did I say the word. I'm pretty sure the first time one of the guys called you douchey, I saw your right arm cock back and I thought he was going to lose some teeth. Yeah. But uh, she's such a sweetie, it didn't happen. <laughs> Listen, you did a really good job on this video. Donkey douchey. My name's Aaron, this is Plan Free. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you like what we're talking about here, hit the like button like it owes you money and subscribe to the channel. The way YouTube runs its algorithm is anytime you press the like button or subscribe, you're helping to tell YouTube that this is good content and that it should be shown to more people. It's free, it just takes a second, but it sure helps a lot. Also, we've begun playing a fun game with all you this year and we have pledged to donate 10 cents US for every new subscriber we get for the remainder of 2021. And we have a video on that in the description. So if you'd like to make us give our money away by simply pressing the subscribe button, go ahead and do that. And we'll be coming up with videos later on on how we gave this money away. Tell everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, I'm Lori. He's there. <laughs> We're plan free. Ha <laughs> ha.